Hi there Pisces, welcome to your December 2017 tarot reading. So right off the bat, I am feeling this little bit of a tug of war and uh, I was hoping that, you know, after last month, the energy would lift for you guys a little bit, but it seems as if uh, it's still here. And um, I just feel like you're being pulled in multiple directions. Too many people are influencing your decision making processes. And you have to also understand that people have their own motives for getting involved. Um, they are also, they seeing you trying to break free. They seeing you trying to come into your own person. They're, they're seeing that you are trying to make some very positive strides and changes in your own life. And that can feel very threatening to them because, you know, they want to cling on to the status quo. They don't want change. So you have to understand that they have their own motives for getting involved. And also their it seems like they're giving you advice, but the advice is filtered through their own motives, their own objectives, and their own life experience. And they're imposing all of that upon your decision-making process. And so I feel that you are clouded and you're not able to hear your own wisdom. And you're not able to kind of listen to your own truth. So it's like you're pulled in opposite directions you know this person a wants you to do this this other person b wants you to do this and somewhere in between is your truth but if you're constantly giving your energy and being pulled in opposite directions you're not going to reach that place of equilibrium to be able to figure out what you want to do and so this is a good month for you to kind of you know take a breather away from people actually and to really sit with yourself and try to figure out, you know, what it is that you want to do and what it is that's, I, I want to say, like, you know, realistically think about why people want you to do certain things and whether or not that is jiving with what you want for yourself. So that's really important. And, you know, you are a very other oriented sign. You don't like to hurt other people's feelings. When people talk, you listen very attentively. But a lot of the times they don't really have anything valuable or anything insightful to offer you through their words. And so what might feel like, you know, a courtesy that you're granting to other people is um, it's really draining your energy. So honestly, I'm sensing for some of you, this tug of war is in a relationship and the relationship has too many people involved. There might be children, there might be family, there might be cultural expectations, there might be as well social expectations as to, you know, let's keep the family intact, let's all stay together, let's, uh, let's not progress, let's not make any changes, let's stick with the status quo. If it's not broken, don't fix it, no matter how dissatisfied you are and then for others of you this is like family members you know somebody that I'm feeling is very uh, stubborn they're headstrong and you're kind of afraid to confront them you walk a, uh, like walk around them kind of like you're stepping on eggshells you know like walking very gingerly very delicately because you don't want to go against the other person but at the same time it's it's really not serving you in any capacity i feel to to fear that person you know it's it's just not for your greater good so i'm going to try to straighten the cards forgive me um and so moving forward with this energy i just feel like you really need to figure out what you want to do and not be affected by what other people expects from you you're very catering to other people and i feel like you know you have a, a really really big heart you want people to get along you want everyone to be okay and i feel as well you know you know how to sacrifice to make other people happy and i just want you to make sure that your efforts are being reciprocated it doesn't feel to me like it is okay and once again um I'm reminded of that November, I, I believe it was October or November, I can't remember. Um, I believe it was November, but where it says like opportunities are knocking at your door and um, you feel somewhat inadequate about taking this plunge, taking this next step on your own. You feel like you need 
some physical support from another person and you want to have you know another person by your side to go through this next journey with you so there's a lot of fear here about being alone and there's a lot of fear here about upsetting other people and right before this I did the Aquarius reading and I mentioned for the Aquarius people you know they're the most independent signs of the zodiac they don't care what people think and uh, as a result of it they are able to blast through obstacles they're able to kind of cut people off very very easily whereas with you guys the energy is almost like polar opposites even though the signs are right next to each other in the zodiac wheel and uh, what it basically means is that you encapsulate all the energies of the other signs and so you do see both sides of the stories you're very highly empathic you're able to slip yourself into somebody else's shoes and you're very empathetic and sympathetic and I feel like while you're doing that while you're doing all of these things for other people what are you retaining for yourself how are you taking care of yourself so this is a month for us to kind of pull back this energy and really reassess how are we practically taking care of ourselves how are we making decisions that really honors what we value and how is somebody else you know chipping away at your self-esteem or disagreeing with you because they want things to be a specific way so when you hold back the love and the affection do they start acting up? Do they start becoming difficult? Or do they start, you know, uh, kicking up a fuss because they've always been taking it for granted? So I feel like this is the month where you start to see things outside of yourself and start to see how energetically other people are affecting you and what you need to do to preserve your energetic field and to also be able to really stand true as to you know what you believe in but the process of standing up for what you believe in and really maintaining this truth here I feel like you've been pulled in different directions you don't really know where you stand anymore you don't really know where you belong anymore and you don't really know what the next step is so we can't really figure out where we need to be and where we need to go if we don't know who we are right and so this is the month to start sorting all through all the falsities, start sorting them out, weaning them out from your life so that you can maintain this essence of, you know, what do I value? Am I financially stable? Am I personally like able to take care of myself? Am I financially independent or are there lingering attachments or are there dependency issues with another person who is giving me things with strings attached that's what I'm feeling here so that's just the gist of this reading okay and let me just go into the individual cards for you so let me talk about this because this is the first card out of the spread and it is residual energy from last month I'm doing this by the way in um, November and with this card coming out, this is basically taking control of your life, having a lot of opportunities opening up for you. The world is your oyster. A lot of opportunities are coming in, opportunities for movement, for career advancement, for professional development, and also for travel. And this is a situation where you see this person encapsulated in this bubble. It's divine protection, but at the same time, there's a lot of fear about, you know, uh, upsetting the status quo. There's fears about changing direction because I feel like your actions are influenced by another person. Um, the emperor in the reverse, it could be a male or a female, but I'm feeling a very strong masculine energy with this figure. And this is somebody, for some of you, it could be like a... Um, family member a husband or a very very strong family member where there are issues when it comes to um, financial like entanglements okay you might be financially dependent on them they might be financially dependent on you and if you are dependent on them financially they feel like they have the right to tell you what to do you know so it's like giving with strings attached they might give you financial assistance but they have conditions that they're imposing upon you 
And then likewise, if you're giving them financial assistance, I feel like they expect more, they take it for granted, and they're not using money in the best way. So there are some issues here about, you know, who are you giving your energy away to? And I, I'm just seeing here control issues. And it is finance related with both of these cards. So the best thing for you to understand here is you have to know when to draw the line. You have to also realize as well when you need to kind of draw back and fill yourself up energetically, make yourself, you know, stable financially, take care of yourself in practical ways, make sure you are fed, make sure you are sleeping at night, make sure that you take care of yourself and don't give your energy away, okay? So that's just pretty much what I'm feeling. I'm sensing many of you will be distracting yourself as well on the work end. So this is a really good card overall that indicates, you know, financial stability and abundance, but it requires a lot of work to get yourself here, or it requires a lot of work to maintain this state, mainly because there were a lot of responsibilities that you had to deal with, you know, last month. There were a lot of uh, things that you have to stay on top of. And so it's constantly like, you know, it's like fighting back the weeds. Um, they keep growing and you have to constantly, you know, chop them down, um, garden and, you know, constantly keep on top of them. And I'm also sensing as well children growing up very, very quickly. And you're trying to find ways to take care of everything, keep everything afloat. Because I do feel like there's a big component for many of you of being very proud of being able to take care of the people that you love. And sometimes you might go overboard showering them with, you know, gifts instead of affection because your time is limited. So we have to really understand what is crucial here. When we give a gift, think of it as what's the most valuable thing you can give another person. It's not really material things. It's mainly, you know, your undivided attention, your time and your energy and kind of figuring out, you know, who do you give that to? Who is worthwhile? Who is not going to take you for granted and behave like they're entitled to it? And if you also get in the habit of giving so much in material things, even though financially you might be struggling, is that setting a good precedent for future obligations or you know future is that like a setting a good example overall so i feel like there are a lot of things here that needs to be re-examined that needs to really be drilled in and i don't know how else to tell you these things because i feel like you know month after month it's the same type of energy so it is the holiday season um i just want to wish you all you know a very happy holiday season but i also feel like in the process of getting involved with family members. You know, we don't always see eye to eye. And uh, when it comes to family, they're co they're, it, co go, it comes with a lot of karma. It comes with a lot of baggage. And it comes as well with a lot of obligations, okay? And so if you're at this space where financially you're doing really well for yourself, I feel like other people in your family who are not, they're going to reach out for assistance. And so you really need to pick and choose whether or not you're able to take care of yourself as well as them or whether or not, you know, taking care of them or helping them in some way is going to detract you from your own goals, your own needs and the things that you need to do for yourself. So I do feel here a lot of family tension uh, situations that might not, uh, where you might not see eye to eye, creative differences. And I feel like, you know, that first message where you're being pulled in different directions, it could be as simple as not agreeing with parenting styles of your relationship partner. It could also be as simple as, you know, I want to send my kids to this school, but my husband or my in-laws want to send my kids to a different school. And so if they're grandparents or their in-laws, they might want the best for the kids. But I feel like financially, you have to look at what is feasible for you. And, you know, don't go bend over backwards to accommodate other people. 
especially if you know what you need to do. So I feel like other people are affecting your decisions and it doesn't need to be that way. You don't want to fight it. You don't want to go against the, the, the tide. You don't want to, you know, uh, create disharmony. But there are some things that you know is the best outcome, that you know is the best course of action, but because you don't want to upset, you know, everybody else, that you find yourself kind of pigeonholed into doing something that they want you to do rather than something that you feel should be done for everybody's greater good, right? And so we need to be a lot less, I want to say, like, don't be so easily influenced by other people. Hang on to your truth. Figure out what you need to do and figure out what you want. Because this is a state here of confusion, being very stuck, being very stagnant, not making any type of a move. And so while you're like this, thinking about, you know, best case scenarios, worst case scenarios, I feel like all of it is playing out in your mind. The sword energy with this eight of swords and also this six of swords, this is pretty much things playing out in the thought processes, but they're not manifesting in a tangible way in the real world. Actions are thought about rather than taken. Things are talked about or pondered about, but not really, uh, they're not carried out in, in the real world. And so that's why, you know, with this in the reverse, it's like you're going back and forth in this decision-making process, but nothing is really moving and things are just back and forth, kind of stagnant. So visually, I want you to see, you know, what I'm getting at here, because I feel like this is multiple months of energy kind of built up and it needs to be released and it is the end of the year it's a good time for us to really think about what we need to do where we need to go what have we already tried and tried and tried and it didn't really work out for us in the past and how we need to you know start making different sets of decisions okay um i'm feeling as well some of you i have as well the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups is kind of like regrets, sorrow. It deals heavily with things that you wish would have happened a different way, things that you wish you hadn't said, things that you wish you hadn't done, or things that you wish like you could go back in time and have a do-over and, and approach it from a different um, mindset. And the point here is with this card, it basically means opportunities are opening up, so you're definitely on the right track. You're definitely where you need to be. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And so cycling through these, you know, should have, could have, I don't feel that they're, it's the right thing to do. It's a waste of energy. And it's keeping you as well very, very much stuck and pinned down and fearful because if you're at a space right now where financially you're okay, you're able to take care of yourself, think of thinking about the past, what should have happened, what you could have done differently. It doesn't really coincide with, you know, the current narrative, which is you have abundance. You have great intuition, insights, and wisdom. And so this energy is not, you know, it's kind of like the odd man out and it needs to be released, okay? Um, <clears throat> I have as well the lover's card and you know keep in mind this is a general reading I'm going to go into your love reading in a little bit um, this usually indicates a situation where you might be involved heavily with a love relationship partner and there isn't a sense of stability that they're they're not able to provide you with the stability or there's like a lot of disagreements, a lot of people involved as well in your relationship. And you know what you have to do and you're seeing it clearly for what it is. But I don't feel that you're taking the steps to remove yourself from it or at least to make some type of an executive decision to decide for yourself once and for all. You know, I'm leaving this because we're incompatible. I'm leaving this because he or she is draining my finances. Or I'm leaving this because 
in a values type of way, the other person does not match my values. They might squander wealth, they might squander money, they might even succumb to a lifestyle where they're constantly dependent upon members of their family for financial wealth, for emotional security. But either way, this is a card about having a lot of potential, but not living up to their potential. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is like this, who is so bogged down by the past, and he or she is not really taking control of their lives. They're, they feel kind of like at the mercy or at the whims of their own lives, and they're not making the positive changes and the strides to move themselves to where they need to be. And if this is another person that you're dealing with, don't make their problems your problem, okay? You, you might get in the habit of, you know, over-sympathizing and wanting to help, wanting to offer a helping hand. And I feel like this situation is really going to drag you down, so just be careful. Once again, um, Pisces, you have a lot of intuition. You have a lot of divine protection coming in. So if there is a situation that you're in fear about, don't fret because you have protection. If you're fearing somebody's anger, if someone is like, you know, when they're angry, they behave very irrationally, or when they drink, when they have substances in their body, they behave in a uh, almost unpredictable or even violent verbally or physically in that way, and you're afraid of it, don't worry about it. You have protection. Okay, and you have the wisdom to know how to get yourself out, but I feel like you just need to make some decisions to take care of yourself, okay? The saving grace here. I have here the Queen of Pentacles, and this is coming out as a person. And what I'm feeling with this is, this is somebody that is an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. And I feel like they, um, it's like a, I'm sensing it's a family member. And I'm also feeling if it's not an earth sign person, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, it is a family member where they have given you advice and assistance before, even, you know, given you a helping hand, their time, their energy, their resources in order to get you back on your feet. And I feel as if right now they're at a point where they really care about you, they really love you, and they have your best interests at heart. But they are getting a little bit like, I can only help you this far. I need you to take the next step. That's what it feels like to me. Or they could give you, I can give you this, but you have to do such and such with this assistance that I'm giving you. So there are strings attached and there are conditions, you know, for good or bad. But I feel like one person... And you might appreciate, you know, the, the way in which these two energies are juxtaposed next to each other. One person loves very, very conditionally. The other person loves unconditionally. But they only want to give out help and assistance because they want you to do things that will be better for you in the long run. So don't mistake these two energies, okay, and clump them together because they definitely don't belong together. So I, I just want you to be aware that I, I feel like you're in a situation where you're not taking control and you need to, you know, kind of step up and take control here. And I do feel as well, as much as uh, I hate saying it, I just feel like some members of the family are getting very impatient and I feel like they're going to step in and intervene. So don't get let it get to that point. You need to take charge of your own life and not, you know, um, not waver when you've already made up your mind. Okay? So I'm going to leave it at that, Pisces. I don't feel financially it's a um, rocky month. But I just feel like in your interactions with other people, it confuses more than it helps. It confuses you more than it clarifies the situation. So really sit with yourself and, you know, listen to your intuition and really sit with yourself and figure out what you want to do, what you want to happen, what you need to do to clear up all of this fog so that you can get yourself, leave this behind so you can get yourself 
where you need to be so you can have a lot more financial abundance in your life, okay? So best of luck, Pisces. I hope this energy clears up. Um, I don't like to give negative readings, but I do care about you guys, okay? Take care of yourself. Um, I hope the holiday season is not too stressful. And uh, I hope you can, you know, enjoy other people's company, but at the same time, take some time for yourself to take care of yourself, all right? Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.